Now Ansible is a great tool and as much fun as it is to ping one command at a time realistically it's only once you get into the playbooks do you really start to see the potential in Ansible. You see Ansible is about creating massive playbooks where you have entire automations of installations, uninstalls or upgrades or anything else you want to do in Ansible. So let's start with the basics. We're going to run a playbook uh, which is very simple. You have the ansible-playbook command. We're going to run our playbook, which is the test.yaml file. And you can see inside my YAML file, I've got a list that says all hosts, and I've got a remote user, which is root. I'm running a couple of basic commands. So just like earlier, we're going to prove that we can't connect until we specify our hosts, which in this case is a separate file. Um, as we've seen also in earlier videos, we're going to see that we've got an authentication problem because I don't have root set up. So we're going to use the K switch and we're going to go ahead and specify the um, SSH key right off the bat. And at that point, you'll be able to see that our script finishes successfully. Now, this makes perfect sense if you're using root, but not everyone's going to be using root and I really don't recommend that you use root for running your scripts. So let's go ahead and look at what would happen if we were to create a different user. So I'm going to go ahead and use John because I happen to know that there is an account for John on the other machine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to specify my SSH password, same as before. Now in theory it should work, you're thinking. But we now have one minor little issue, which is John is not root, which means he needs to sudo to get those privileges. Now, that means that we're going to get a problem here whereby we don't have the privileges and I haven't shown you yet how to get around that and there is more than one way. So how do we get around this? Well, first of all, we've got to tell the Ansible playbook that we want to go and become um, using the become command. So this is the part where you tell it, hey, I'm going to need elevated privileges, in this case, sudo. So we're using become true. It could also be become yes, they have the same output. And in theory, we should be able to get past that step. But what we're going to see is another error. And at this point, most people usually start scratching their heads and thinking, oh, now what is it? Now, the problem here is we haven't specified a sudo password. And since our remote machine isn't spent to use a non sudo, we're going to have to enter the sudo password using a uppercase K. Now, since we only specified the become for that one command, the second command, inevitably enough, is going to fail because it also requires root privileges. So we're just going to go ahead and add that on the second part as well. And we're going to save and we're going to run again. And we're going to simply prove that this now will complete successfully. Obviously, this is not the way you want to be running your playbook because it's forcing you to specify many, many commands and many switches just to get through the day. So do you have to use the become? Correct, you do if you're not using a root user. But you do have the option of at least getting around all the SSH keys. So I'm now going to go and correctly configure my host and then show you how quick and easy it is. So now that I've configured my SSH session and I've also set it as a no password in the uh, sudoers within my remote system, I should now be able to connect using no password switches and just using the become within the Ansible playbook. So you'll see there's no case switches anywhere and I'm not gonna enter any passwords because I will no longer require them. So if I just go ahead and run, you'll see that this playbook now finishes without any interruptions or additional keys being required, which is how it should run in your environment. Again, um, I recommend that you set up all your SSH keys beforehand, and depending on your environment, you may have them from the very beginning as root, and then you just create the additional user as needed for Ansible. I highly recommend that you have a user for Ansible and keep root separate for some other functions. That was our introduction to Ansible Playbooks. If you like this video, please give it a like. 
Um, again, you will find all the reference material in terms of commands that were used within the comments section below this video in case you need to refer to them later.